I, I don't think that's a particularly revolutionary observation on mm. my part. That's the sort of thing that the bit, especially the, the real Bitcoin enthusiasts, the ones who are delving into the phenomenon from a philosophical or even a theological perspective, weirdly enough, are insisting. Well, it's incorruptible because there is no central agent of control. I mean, well, you, I'm just bringing polls to Newcastle here. I mean, one of the things that all of you object to is the ability of central bankers to inflate the currency. And I do think you can make a pretty credible argument that that's a, you can interpret that as a form of a theft. And, and uh, uh, I'm not saying, I, I'm not saying it is. Because that's complicated, right? I mean, in a, in a free society like your society, and until recently mine. Um, yeah, I wish that was funny. Um, you know, the people, the people who are who are who are managing the monetary supply are elected, and, and that means that we do have control over the process, or at least as much control as any of us have over any political processes, and we're gonna. We're going to take that away. Um, now, the, the argument is that, well, we should take that away because money's a ledger. You know, it's an exchange of labor. It's an exchange of productivity. It's an exchange of value. That's a better way of thinking about it. It's a way of tracking the exchange of value between individuals. And it isn't obvious that once you and I enter into a contract of value that a third party should be able to uh, alter the means by which we track that mm -hmm. exchange for their purposes, whatever those purposes are. And again, I think that's a rational argument, but that doesn't mean it's right. Um, these are very, very complicated issues. I mean, most of us assume that taxation is acceptable, um, or at least we don't you know, strike up the revolution because it occurs. We seem to think that there is a role for government and for the determinations that government make outside the free market per se. Obviously, the government has to exercise some control over currency, over money, in order to make its functions possible. When we take, if we take the control of currency away from the government, we don't know what that'll do, for example, to taxation. You know, if we could all of a sudden do all of our transactions in secrecy, like in real secrecy. Well, you, you could argue the world was on a gold standard and, and that limited the control of governments over money and still taxation existed for Fair enough. many hundreds Fair, of years. Fair enough, you know. Mm. Um, I, I guess what I, would, what I would point to from the devil's advocate perspective is that, well, we shifted away from the gold standard in the 70s and you know, all hell hasn't broken loose. Now, I do accept the proposition that currencies have inflated and perhaps in a counterproductive manner, but the last 60 years have been pretty damn productive economically. And so that system did work. Now you could say, well, it could have worked better. It's like, yeah, maybe, but it certainly hmm. could have worked a hell of a lot worse. And so, well, that's just, this isn't a criticism of Bitcoin, it's just, I mean, I've watched over the years as social scientists have tried to mount large-scale social experiments with the best of intentions and, mm -hmm. you know, generally, almost invariably, that doesn't work. Well, you know, maybe mm -hmm. things are un unfolding. I'm not really suggesting that you do mm -hmm. anything as a consequence of this caution. I'm just saying that you know, unbridled enthusiasm predicated on the assumption that your new system will only do the good things you think it will do, that's, that's not wise. That isn't what will happen. Now, it might, this currency revolution might be proceeding in as positive a manner as we could expect, because at the moment what we have is, in some sense, unbridled competition between a variety of currencies. I mean, we had that before, because you could, of course, you could hold currency from different countries and that was analogous in some sense and so that that possibility existed before but you have the cryptocurrencies now and they're competing with fiat currencies and maybe that's the right way to settle which one is more valid is to let the competition proceed apace and let a multitude of people make their free choice and you know accept the emergent winner as the valid winner 
Right. And since I believe the market is the only way of making those sorts of calculations, then that seems like a fair approach. It I seems fair to me that, too, yeah. Yeah, well, I suspect that there'll be a lot of obstacles along the way because I think Bitcoin is now worth more than silver. Um, hmm. I believe that's the case. I believe that's true, yeah. Yeah, it's something like that. So that, you know, it, it's, it's, it, silver has been a, a standard of value, not as reliably as gold, but maybe second or third place. And so the fact that Bitcoin has knocked it out of that position is really something. My suspicions are that, that there's going to be a lot of kickback at the governmental and bureaucratic level mm -hmm. over the next 10 years, you know, and um, it's certainly possible for government agencies to put a stick in the spokes of a very well-functioning bicycle. And I, uh, because Bitcoin does present a real threat to the, to the centralizer types, they're not going to take that lying down. Now, whether they can do anything about it or not, that's a different question. But, you know, recently in Canada, um, some of the trucker protest activity was financed through Bitcoin donations and the government went after the Bitcoin purveyors and they mm. capitulated. And so, you know, that didn't mean the government had direct access to the keys, but yep. they did manage to get access to the, uh, to the, to the records of the, um, what do you call them, the intermediaries.